Happening today, NASA is preparing to land the Mars 2020 Perseverance rover on the Red Planet in a spot they're calling the most difficult landing attempted on the planet. It's expected to begin this afternoon. Joining me now with more on the mission, NASA mechanical engineer Aaron Yazzie. Good to see you this morning, Aaron. Thank you so much for having me. A lot to get through in a short amount of time. So in the simplest way possible, explain how the landing will work for Perseverance and then a little bit about Perseverance's little uh, buddy as well, the, uh, the drone who will be flying alongside. Yeah, sure. So right now, uh, the Perseverance rover is inside of its heat shield, and it's flying on its way to Mars at about 12,000 miles per hour. Um, it's going to, today, later today, it's going to be hitting the top of the atmosphere, um, entering into Mars's atmosphere with that heat shield. And then th there's a couple stages it'll go through to get itself slowed down in, in, in time to rest its wheels on the ground. And that involves um, ejecting its heat shield, uh, deploying a giant parachute. Um, it actually come down on basically a jetpack for a period of time, and then it will lower itself on a what we call a sky crane, uh, basically cables that will lower it to the ground until its wheels are resting on the ground, cuts away that, that, that jetpack, and then the rover can just wake up and be on Mars. It's amazing. And real quick, um, Ingenuity is, is the drone that will be uh, also there. What is that role? That's right. Ingenuity is basically a small helicopter. It's a small drone, and it's basically a, a, a demonstration that we can fly anything on Mars. It's always challenging to fly things on Mars because of its low density atmosphere. Um, but if we can prove that we can fly something like a helicopter on Mars, it might mean that we can send more and more flying missions to Mars. So, Aaron, out of the entire planet of Mars, you pick this one spot, and, and I'm thinking, like on Earth, you think about how different different parts of Earth is. Why this one spot? How'd you zero in on that one location? Right. The spot that we're sending Perseverance is called Jezero Crater. And it's a giant crater that was made by an impact billions of years ago. And at one point, we think it was covered in water, like it was a giant lake about the size of Lake Tahoe. And uh, we want to drive around there, look at rocks where they might be holding um, all the ancient uh, sediments of that lake, which are likely, if we're going to be finding life on Mars, that's where we're going to find it. And that's the, the mission, the main question that we're trying to answer with this mission is, was there ancient life on Mars? And how long do you think that would take once you're able to get a sample as to what's actually in that crater? Um, so there's, this is the first leg in a whole Mars sample return campaign. We're trying to get those samples back to Earth, which is the first time we've ever tried to launch something and bring it back to Earth. And we'll be able to study those samples here on Earth a lot better than we would if we were to send instruments to Mars. Um, and that process is going to take about 10 years. So a couple things real quick, Aaron. First of all, for scientists like yourself, uh, it's been seven months now since the launch. What have you been doing for the last seven months? Are you like somebody when they're, they go away and they check their camera on their pet to make sure that the pet is behaving the whole time? What have you been doing? Right. So my role is I'm a mechanical engineer. I actually built all the drill bits for this rover. So I'm really looking forward to the first time that we can use them after we land. Um, but also, as we're flying, I switched over to testing mode. We tested out all of the capabilities of drilling into rocks and, and passing those samples um, into the rover and caching them so that we can make sure that when we're ready, we can do that successfully on Mars. So Aaron, uh, last thing for you, I'm personally vested in this mission because uh, uh, like 11 million other people, I'm on board. I, I pulled up my boarding pass and I, and I have my boarding pass for the mission today. Um, but I, I do have one bone to pick with you because it does say on my boarding pass at the bottom, uh, I've, I've earned zero award points. I, I assume that, that when the mission is a success, I'll get those, right? Oh yeah, for sure. You'll get all the award points. <laughs> Listen, I appreciate it. How are you going to celebrate uh, once you have a successful landing? Oh, well, we'll be on a giant web call with all of our team. It's too bad we can't be there in person, but we'll definitely be jumping for joy and celebrating um, remotely with our families and friends. All right, and for folks who want to watch it live, there's a way to do so? That's right. You can tune into mars.nasa.gov. All the links you need are right there. All right, it's going to be fantastic. Uh, estimated time this afternoon when you think it'll happen? Um, so for us in uh, California, it'll be happening around 11.15 is when the live okay. stream will start. About 2.15 um, here, then. you guys, I guess that's one uh, fifteen. Yep. All right, about 2.15 here on the East Coast. Oh, 2.15. Uh, yep, that's it. Aaron, thank you very much. Good luck to you.